Thank you. Um, we cool to do any questions now? Are we good for question time? I was told there was a schedule. <laughs> Is that a lie? <laughs> My favorite tent is the labyrinth. Sorry, lots of tough reading. <laughs> uh, it, it kind of began as just a, an exploration of space. So it's um, it's not just a maze. It's kind of lots of wondrous rooms that sort of lead into mysterious hallways. And I think that's my favorite space that I would love to like actually explore in the circus. I think the circus itself kind of develops as my ideal entertainment venue. Like I, I love. Um, things that are immersive that you can go in and you're completely surrounded in it. I was a theater major in college, so there's probably a lot of my theater background <laughs> seeping into the circus, but I, I love the idea of having an entertainment that's something that you go in and you interact with and you explore rather than something you sit and watch. That's kind of where the whole circus idea came from. It's not really a traditional circus, it's kind of more like an immersive performance art space in a way. You'll have to visit the explorer. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yes. Um, and then I had two questions. Okay. One was um, uh, the research that you did, uh, <coughs> uh, how that went, and, and what you did to. Uh, I didn't research, I made things up. It was all. <laughs> it was all <laughs> I, like 99% of it is just completely made up, and then I would check to make sure I wasn't being too terribly anachronistic. <laughs> wow. I'm sure little anachronistic things snuck in there, but it was things like. I've, I've always had a love of the time period, and, and that, so I kind of just used things that I thought felt appropriate or that I could visualize as, as working well in that sort of era and aesthetic, and, and then I'd be really disappointed to find out that cotton candy wasn't invented until 1914, so that, that, that was so bomb. I actually have, at one point, a character invents caramel corn because the dates were a little fuzzy, as so I was like, maybe just have someone put the caramel on the popcorn and we'll kind of get out of it that way. That's great. <laughs> and, and, and I'm also wondering if um, the film options uh, have been discussed there yet. There is a film option. Yeah. Summit yeah. Entertainment has the film option. Yeah. Uh, I have talked to them. They are so incredibly enthusiastic and they really love the story and, and they they fought for it too. So um, they are really like, I feel like it's in very good hands that they're being very thoughtful about how they're approaching it. Um, they're right now trying to assemble a team to, to get the right um, people together to do it and um, I did have a psychic tell me that it was going to have very beautiful cinematography so <laughs> like, see, my psychic seemed to be pretty like on the ball so are you going to have much input um, I will actually probably have more input than most authors I will at least have people talking to me I don't think I get to tell them what not to do <laughs> so if they, if they come up with things that I'm just like oh please don't do that I don't think it's going to really have any sort of effect but I will kind of be involved in the process a little more than most people so that's I, I'm just looking forward to seeing how they actually make things that I came up with never anticipating anyone having to put together these like fantastical <laughs> cuckoo box that I don't even know if are physically possible <laughs> but now someone's gonna have to make them <laughs> that's yeah. quite mm -hmm. delightful or CGI them which is much more likely <laughs> they <Timber. I> will <laughs> awesome. yes so so you had the initial book with the with the Edward Gorey people walking around and then you changed the circus how much of that survived if any of it Nothing. 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 Oh, I have. Um, and they just got you there. Yeah. It was just. I have. Um, if you took all the material that was edited and changed and removed and thing to get here, it is easily three times this amount of writing. It, it's it's pages and pages and pages of stuff to just create the world and kind of. It, it's not likely the most efficient way to write, <laughs> but it, it. I kind of have to explore while I'm working and I have to kind of dig through a lot of stuff that I'm not necessarily going to use before I, I kind of find the final product. And are you pretty good at cutting or do you find it difficult? It, it was hard at first and now I'm really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just like, okay, this whole section can go. I, by the time we were like getting to the last ones, I was just like taking things out left and right and didn't care anymore. It, it definitely got less painful as it went. Did you ever think you would be a writer when you were a child? 
Not really. I kind of made things up in my head a lot, but I didn't really write. And I, I was kind of um, more into visual art and theater for a very long time, and that was sort of my storytelling of choice. And I always wanted to write, and I spent a lot of time thinking about writing without actually writing. Mm -hmm. um, and it took me a, a very long time to actually get to the stage where I've got words on pages because I, I would try to write and then be so frustrated with how bad what I was writing was that I would give up. And what worked for me was I started doing National Novel Writing Month in 2003 and just having the idea of just sitting down and just writing and not being overly self-critical and just trying to get like a, a, as many words as I could down really kind of opened up that like part of my brain for me and I, I think as a tool not necessarily to like have a finished novel in 30 days because I don't think that's possible um, but to, uh, it worked for me as a way to develop myself as a writer. Did you actually have the time to write or did you have to work? <laughs> I had a time. Job, I was, I was job. lucky. I started writing when I, I had a, a day job but I was lucky enough to be able to quit and kind of um, focus full time on my writing and my painting to see if one of them took off and yeah. this is what happened. So it was a gamble but it, it paid Did off. Did you do any workshops? No. I, I've never I took playwriting classes in college and that is the only formal writing training I've ever had. Yeah. Amazing. Um, I, I'm more interested, I'm very interested in your theater background. Um, I was wondering what playwrights inspired you. Oh, um, I'm, I'm kind of a Shakespeare girl, which is probably very obvious yeah. from some of the stuff we've seen. Um, Tom Stoppard's another very favorite. Um, I think I was kind of big into um, sort of avant-garde theater. Um, one of the, the big theatrical inspirations um, for this in particular is I kind of gave up on theater. Like after college, I, I burnt out completely, but um, I was lucky enough when I was working on revising in, um, uh, in Boston, um, there's a British company called Punch Drunk that does immersive theater, and their first U.S. production they staged two years ago in Boston, it's now playing in, in New York City, it's called Sleep No More, it's this immersive Hitchcockian Macbeth, and you go into the space, they, they in Boston they did it in an abandoned school, in, in New York it's in kind of like this like huge old building. Um, and the action unfolds around you and you get a mask when you go in and you just choose where to go and you wander around and it was the closest thing I'd ever experienced to the circus in real life so there are little homages to it in the book that the, the tunnel that you go through to, to enter the circus and things like that are pulled directly from that production. 